my journey started about five years ago when I, I experienced a hearing loss. Um, I have what they call an acoustic neuroma that is wrapped around the auditory nerve where it enters the brain. Um, so consequently, I lost 100% hearing in my right ear and 85% in my left ear. Before Ryan came to us last fall, um, I started using a device that is plugged into our system here. It allowed me to hear the sermons. It allowed me to hear from the lectern um, where the liturgist reads and such. Um, as far as outside of the actual sanctuary, I was really at a tremendous loss and um, felt very isolated, I would have to say. We have Sunday school ministry here, uh, for, and the adults are actually more excited about Sunday school even than the kids. They love, they're just hungry to engage the Word of God. I was very active with our Sunday school class, and that meets in our church parlor. So it was very difficult for me if I wasn't looking directly at an individual to participate in Sunday school, which I really felt at a loss for because I enjoyed that interaction and learning process. If you can't hear what people are saying in discussion though, you, you can't engage Sunday school. And so she had sadly stopped going, not out of lack of interest, not out of lack of attendance, but simply because it was not physically possible for her to engage in Sunday school. Ryan, within the first month of being here, unbeknownst to me, unbeknownst to most of our congregation, called Terry and talked to him about my disability. And it, was there anything that could possibly be done so that I could participate in Sunday school? Well, I bet Ryan just before General Synod began at a connection event for uh, general sem or seminary students. Uh, there were about 20 seminary students who were gathering and I was invited to uh, for about an hour to explain to them um, what was available to pastors and other ministry leaders in the way of uh, resources and processes. Talk to them about the Ministry of Disability Concerns and how that integrates into Transform and Transforming. Share some ideas, some resources, some ways that uh, what we offer in Disability Concerns could be helpful in churches uh, living out their mission, depending on what their context is. He made a number of suggestions, one of which was, why don't we move the class into the sanctuary? They'll sit around the communion table with folding chairs and that way we can put the choir mic in the middle of the table. When you talk into the choir mic, it puts it through the telecoil system and it goes right into Ellie's hearing aid and she can hear crystal clear. It was like a whole new world had opened up again for me because I was able to hear the whole discussion, to participate in the discussion. It, it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience world is set up for people like me and so it's very humbling to realize that you know I have a huge advantage in that regard and so I can take for granted most of the spaces where I go that I can do whatever I want to do in those spaces not necessarily the case uh, for everybody else so it just was any time that I think your thinking is shifted it's always really moving and it gets you thinking more and, and engaging more and that was what happened Consequently, I had written a letter to Terry thanking him for his, his guidance with that whole thing. And Terry wrote me back and said that there was such a thing as disability advocates within congregations, which I never had heard of. I had never heard that we had a disability advocate in the Senate. And so as a member of consistory, I'm a standing elder on consistory, um, I went to Consistory and I said, uh, who's better to be a disability advocate but somebody with a disability who understands disabilities and the feelings that go along with that. 
So as of now, I am our disability advocate here at the Reformed Church of Syracuse and very happy to do that because we do have some other disabled people in the congregation. And I'm sure there are some who haven't confessed that yet, that they have some disabilities, be it hearing, be it sight. So whenever there's an issue in the future, um, and we hope that there will be issues because that means that people are seeking then Ellie will be there ready to make sure that a physical limitation is not going to keep you from encountering him. The city of Syracuse has changed a lot since many of our members grew up. There's more temporary housing, more rentals, there are less jobs, there are certainly more immigrants, there's more diversity, more poverty. Um, a few factories have left, uh, taking thousands of jobs with them. Um, but the city has kind of hit its bottom and is on the way back up through the university, the hospitals, um, and sort of the innovative, technology, future-oriented uh, industries. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and uh, pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. So I think that that's our job as a church here in Syracuse. And so whether that's we need some mics that will allow people who can't hear to hear, or whether that's we need to be intentional about the way that we communicate so that we can be Greeks to the Greeks and Jews to the Jews. And so this is a great first step to, to thinking outside of the box and saying how can we bring a message rather than repeat a message to ourselves. Responses like that of uh, the Reformed Church in Syracuse help uh, folks in the church to look out in their community to see who some of those people are in their own neighborhoods who are feeling isolated, who are not able to participate in the life of uh, the neighborhood, the community, uh, the church, and to look for ways one-on-one uh, -on -one or just through building relationships to say that uh, you matter, uh, we want to be helpful to you in ways that are appropriate, and uh, how can we um, make this church a place that shows that it cares about its neighbors. How do we help the city thrive? Then the church will thrive.